In this video, we're going to look at task flows and how you can use them in Fabric. We're going to look at what it is, what it's for, and its basic components on how you can get started with it. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you've opened your Power BI workspaces for the first time this month, you must have seen this massive section covering half of your workspace screen. And it certainly annoyed me a lot, especially because I needed to get something done straight away. And this is actually the new task flow feature that the Fabric team released in May of this year. And just a quick tip for you guys, you can use this handlebars to adjust the size of this task flow or even hide it altogether using this button. They should have just made this default if I'm being completely honest with you, but that's how you kind of just hide it quickly. So you must have noticed that this wasn't part of the Power BI May update, and it's because it's primarily a Fabric feature, not really just a Power BI feature, but nonetheless, it is a feature that is available for you in workspaces within Power BI service. So I thought I'd try to cover it just to shed some light on what it is. So task flows are basically just a way to visualize your data architecture in an organized way. So imagine when you start working on a Power BI solution for the first time, you want to plan out where the data is coming from, how it gets ingested and transformed and then visualized. So Fabric essentially provides all these capabilities end to end, and you can use task flows to organize your solution or give inspiration to you if you don't know how to organize it. So let's have a look at task flows first. And let's have a look at this in my workspace here. So if I just expand it, let's just have a look at how it looks like. So this is basically task flow. At the moment, there's only one task flow per workspace. And you can get started by either selecting the select a task flow button here at the bottom or clicking add a task. This will allow you to create your tasks and connections from scratch. So let's start actually from here. So let's click that and let's choose the type of task that we want to add. So these are basically the tasks that you can connect from one to another. Uh, and I will show you how to do that in a minute. So for now, let's choose one of these things. So let's choose get data here. So this is what it creates. It creates this sort of nodes where you can drag around in this canvas. You have a few options here. Uh, I'm just going to move this to the left hand side here. You have a few options to customize on the right hand side. So you can adjust things like the task name, task description. And you'll notice that at the bottom of this task, you have the option to either add a new item associated with this task or an existing one with this attachment icon here. So a new one, as you can see, will let you choose to create a bunch of these other items in your workspace, or you can choose associate with an existing item into or from your workspace. So there are a few things here that we can start to use. For example, you can associate data sets sorry, semantic models, reports, dashboards, all of these things you can assign to this. So let's choose one here, for example. So this, this report barcode scan, uh, if you hit select, what you'll notice is that there will be one item now associated to this task flow. Now you'll see what is that item because at the bottom here, you will notice that it's now filtering and showing you what that item is. Now, in this case, it's just barcode scan. So it's applying the filter because we have the task selected. So it's showing all of the items that are associated with this task. Now, if you select another item in this, for example, it will filter that task and vice versa. So. Uh, if we just remove that filter and just have a look at our workspace now, you will notice that there is a new column here, task, which lets you see and organize your items in your workspace in a color-coded way to basically 
understand and show which part of the task flow they belong to. So you can assign an item to a task, but an item can only be one task at a time. So for example, let's try to create a new task here. So I'm going to create, let's say store data, which as you can see, it will create a different one here. If I do an association again and choose the same item here, you'll notice that it won't work because the item or an item can only be associated to one task at a time, So, which is currently get data. So if you want to move that to be in store, you just need to make sure you unassign it from this task and then reassign it to store. You can create flows between two items by simply dragging from one node to another. So just hit drag here. Or if we delete that, you can also set it up from the add button here. So if you select the connector option here, it will let you choose which node to which node and which way goes. And that lets you create that connector. So as I mentioned in this view, you can drag around your tasks. If you have multiple ones, it's easier to kind of organize them in a way that makes sense to you. You can zoom in or zoom out of your canvas, adjusts the ordering or organization of your tasks. And how you organize them here gets retained in this workflow. So if you adjust it to be this way, it will stay like this when you open it next time. However, I know that there is, and it looks like there is a bug where if a task is not connected using a connector anywhere, it will just get moved around. So just make sure that you have connectors to them if you're using them in the canvas and you don't want them to be moved around. Lastly, let's have a look at this other option, create a task flow. So under add, you have this select task flow, or if you start from the very beginning, you have that big green button. And what it will do is it will give you a few options that you can use pre-created options that the Fabric team has created for you. So let's have a look at some of these task flows that they are suggesting to us. So there are kind of a few different methodologies that they recommend us to use. And let's say, let's choose, uh, let's choose Lambda, for example, uh, which says that it will create nine tasks. So if we select that, it's showing us an error because we have already made some changes to our canvas. And it's basically just a warning that it will either replace the task flow or append, which means we just add it on top of the current canvas that we have, in which case you don't lose any of the tasks that you already created. So in this case, we just want to replace everything. And here, another warning window shows us just to make sure that we know what we're doing. And obviously this is, you just be very careful. It's actually kind of nice that they warn you twice, because if you've put a lot of effort already in your task flows, it, this is a very easy way for you to delete it. So uh, if you hit confirm, as you can see, it will create a task flow for you that is following this sort of Lambda methodology, which is pretty interesting. So if you want to explore and see what is available to you, it's a good way or a good place to start if you don't know where to, you start from. So as this is a preview feature, I believe that it's a bit limited in terms of functionality. So I expect that the Power BI team or the Fabric team will improve this in the future. But here are some ways that I think it can be improved. One is the ability to customize the tasks themselves. So as you saw earlier, you can customize the title and description of each of these tasks. However, it would be nice to be able to change the colors, the types, or even create new types of these task types that you can use, uh, because you might be using some other tools or other types that might not fit in this selection that they've created. So a lot of these things basically are set in stone. You can change them and probably because it's a lot easier to manage this way but it would be nice if there is a little bit more customization options in this case. It would also be good if we're able to reference items across workspaces. So 
in Power BI, for example, there are lots of ways that you can use other items from other workspaces. So for example, in Power BI, you could have a solution where you'd put, be pulling data from items from a different workspace. And with this kind of task flow, you can't really assign those items from another workspace in this task flow because it belongs to a different workspace. So it would be good to have a way to kind of points to other items from other workspaces. Lastly, and I think this is tied to the previous point that I mentioned before, I think task flows make sense to be across tenants and not tied to workspaces. So I think that this feature is meant to kind of be siloed into workspaces, but I believe that it's a lot better to be as part of these options on the left-hand side where you can choose you know, things like metrics or apps and things like this. So you'd be able to create the task flow. And if, if it's a task flow for across multiple workspaces, it's not really siloed into workspaces. You can pull from all of these other places. If you want to create multiple task flows, you can create it in multiple tabs. We've seen it already in the model view or the semantic model view in the Power BI reports. And it makes a lot more sense, especially because a lot of the solutions that I implement recently utilize or are utilized across multiple workspaces. So if you think about how we use deployment pipelines, for example, you wouldn't be able to use this to kind of model that because data pipelines are done across workspaces. Other than that, I think this is a feature that is something that I'll continue to look over in the next few months to see what the Fabric team is cooking up. But for now, it's, yeah, it's a great start and I'm looking forward to seeing more. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how you can start utilizing task flows to build and plan out your solutions in Power BI. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how you can start utilizing task flows to plan out your solutions in Fabric. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, something to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.